Hey guys, how's it going? It's Robert from uh, R&R Overland. Today, I have a quick video to show you my bug out bag. I have a, uh, a wife and two daughters and a dog, and we're transitioning into the Overland lifestyle. And when we're out on the trail for multiple days, it's good to have a backup plan in place in case something happens to the truck or one of us that we have a way to fix ourselves medically and that we have food and water on hand at all times just in case the wrong does happen. I'm going to give you a brief overview. I have two uh, one, two bags to go through pretty much. and uh, We'll start from the small bag and move to the big bag. And then... Alright guys, the first bag we're going to go through is my quick response bag. Um, this is also in the truck with me at all times as well as my big bag here. This is my quick response bag. Any uh, car accidents or uh, quick injuries, anything I need to get to quickly, I use this bag. It's quickly accessible within the truck. And this is the bag it is our go-to bag. So open it up here. Two little clips. Medical supplies. I go through it one by one. I'm not gonna go in depth of what they do. I'm not trying to make this long video, but we'll go through each one. Just got a simple chest seal here. Gunshot wounds to chest. Anything you help uh, tension with thorax and stuff like that. Chest seal is a go-to item to have. This is also chest seal as well. So I carry two chest seals in this bag. Combat gauze. This is combat gauze. So if you have um, a deep wound, anything that's consistently bleeding, this has a hemostatic agent in it, which will clot your blood. So you're going to pack this in there, and it's going to clot the blood a lot faster than regular gauze. And I'm pretty sure I have a couple of these in here. Yeah, okay, just three in there. Tape. Tape's good. Medical tape here. Just another emergency bandage. Another emergency bandage, six inch. Got your H and H wrap. This also, along with the combat gauze, you shove this down into the wound, and it'll stop the bleeding as well. And you could really, you bring this out, expand it, and you'll just shove it down into the wound. Another uh, emergency bandage here. H and H wrap. So we got in here. Got some gloves sealed so they're protected and not contaminated. Alright, then we got a MPA with the, the lubricant. So having trouble breathing or they have a uh, wound to the face where they can't breathe on their throughout their mouth or the nose or their nose is messed up. You lube this this bad boy up and you just stick it down into their nose and it help them like, breathe out of this. Pretty sure that's that for that one. In here, this is a, a quick pouch. So in here, I have paracord. So many, so much paracord. Tourniquet and uh, surgical scissors here. That might be it for that one. And that was the quick response bag here. Now, this is my go-to. After, if I don't need quick response, this has everything we need to self-sustain us for at least a week for uh, my family of four. There's some stuff I will be adding to this in the future to accommodate my dog, but this is what I have right now. This is just kind of a beginner. It's not really in-depth. Uh, all of this stuff you can grab at your local store like Walmart or uh, Bass Pro Shop, anything like that. Uh, I bought some stuff online and I also got some stuff um, from work because I'm, I'm in the military. so. We'll go through, we'll start in medical, we'll the outside and then we'll go to medical and then we'll hit the inside, the meat, meat and potatoes here. So on the outside I have a quick survival kit, uh, I think you can find these online, it's a survival grenade or something they're called, I forgot what brand this is, it has like fishing hook, um, weights, a razor blade, tin foil, fire starter, um, so on and so forth. And that, right here, another tourniquet, need plenty of those. I have a pretty big family, so. Now right here we got a seatbelt cutter. This literally, I have more of these inside the truck. This sets in the middle of both the kids. So if anything happens, this thing is latched down on the back seat. And if you need to keep cut through car seats, I can literally just reach back. This is right in my arm's reach before I even touch the car seats. I can just pull this bad boy out and cut their uh, straps off their uh, car seats. So we'll go ahead and uh, hit the medical pouch here. 
So you open it up, you already have a lot of stuff falling. I need to do some reorganizing or maybe buy a bigger pack. I don't know. I've added to this a lot. So we'll hit off with the medicine. Good to carry medicine, especially because we're overlanders. So we like to go on um, camping trips and stuff. We have a big trip planned next year. It's 15 days worth of off-road. So it's good to have medicine. We have more in the house, but this is what I keep in the bag. It's cough syrup, anti-diarrheal, nasal decongestant, painkillers, so on and so forth. Your basic necessities. A lot of stuff that I'm going to have in this pouch, I'm also going to have in a quick response bag. But this goes more in depth of like basic medical needs. Ace bandage, just in case you uh, you treat a wound and you want to keep it covered, you have ace bandage. More combat guys, three more. Another tourniquet. Got plenty of these inside the truck as well. More H&H &H wraps. We went over with the quick response bag here. Three more emergency bandages here. What? That is making video the quiet, okay? And then also, I have permanent markers. You never really know when you're going to need these, but I keep them in a medical pouch just in case. And then I have a knife. This knife is dedicated just to medical. I haven't used it for anything else. I wanted to try to not contaminate this knife. It might not be completely sterile, but I'm going to use it for cutting bandages and stuff like that just because I do not use this knife for anything else. I have yet to use it. And also down here, I have a scalpel. Completely sterile. I haven't used it. It's still sealed in the, in the uh, protective cover. Really, really sharp, so be careful if you get scalpels. All right, so we're gonna go deeper into this bag. Another MPA, the one that you shove down the nose, help with breathing. Another chest seal. Uh, then I have like this basic first aid kit that I started out with. This has basic, basic, basic necessities. I have a list of what I know is in there. I probably won't really touch this much just because it's a lot of really basic cheap stuff, but. There's like cards in here to teach you about medical, like first aid and stuff like that. So it's kind of helpful. This is more something I'll lean towards teaching my daughter how to do medical and all that stuff when she gets a little older. More tape. Reach out in here. You might actually see my daughter in a second. She's over here riding her bike. Now, this is a uh, first aid kit eye dressing. So any damages to the eye. Or anything like that you actually can seal the eye up so you don't get dust or anything coming back down the trail on the way to the hospital so this completely seals up the eye a syringe of course for medicine and stuff like that these are triangular bandages I have a lot of these triangular bandages you can use these for a lot of things get that deeper in here what is this one this is a four inch by seven inch pad help uh, keep wounds clean, dressed. Hand sanitizer, of course. Any hand sanitizer when you're working with anything. You can hear, I think this pouch right here has like the basic necessities for little cuts and wounds and stuff like that. More gloves, completely sealed so they don't get contaminated. We're on the trail a lot, so a lot of dust comes inside the truck. So I know it's in a pocket, but I, I want to keep like the main stuff, like gloves and stuff, out of uh, getting dirty and stuff like that. Antibacterial wipes, Carmex, insect repellent. This got in here. This is another basic first aid kit. This is, has like band aids and stuff. This is my go to for little cuts and wounds on my daughters because they're so small that I want to put band aids on them. So it's just simple right there. Um, you got some uh, some topical antiseptic. So typically, like um, let me say, neosporin. I got two things of those. And that's it for the medical pouch, I believe. I, I got nothing else in there. All right, let's so zip that up. Back over there. Can I have a drink of my water? Can I have a drink of my water? All right, whatever. Go. Go, honey. Go over there. What? 
Can he go over there? All right, so we're gonna start on these two uh, top pouches here. I think one I have fire, and one's like other basic, basic stuff. I think I've actually taken a lot of my fire starter stuff out, but we'll see what I have on hand in here. And uh, I can do a video in the future when it's actually packed with all my fire starter that I want in here, and I'll update y'all in the future. So we'll start with this pouch here. Just a little container. Here's my snare wire, of course. I have food in the truck and in this bag, but if somehow me and the family are out longer than I expected, snare wire and I can set up some traps and I'll have my rifle on me as well. So, backup plan. Also here, we're in dire need to have a signal mirror. The Star Flash Survival Series signal mirror. In case all else fails and I need to signal somebody. I have a flashlight here. This one's pretty cool. So, I press this button. Oh. Alright, there it is. <laughs> so, this one takes no batteries for this flashlight. You just wind it up, press the button, and it lights up. So, if it ever dies, you just wind it up. Like those old time radios, they don't take a uh, battery. Here we got. Just one of them survival knives that has a spoon, and fork, knife, bottle opener, stuff like that. Wisp, these are awesome too. For toothbrushes. Quick, clean your teeth with these. Even if you're stranded or whatever, you need to keep your hygiene up. More in here. No, no, these are really cool. If I can get to these. These are towels, little small towels, just in case we need to wash ourselves off or anything. These expand when they touch water, and they make a big towel. Don't know how big, but instead of having towels that I jam in somewhere, this takes a minuscule amount of room, and I have three towels. Also, even though I carry water on board, at least 10 gallons worth, and I have emergency water in here, you need to plan for the future and all else fails, water purification tablets. So if we find a body of water, I can purify it. Or I have stuff in here that I also can boil it. And then just another knife. This one has a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, flathead, another bottle opener, knives, has a pair of scissors and stuff like that. All right, we're going to start on this pouch now. Miranda, oh, you got Gracie? Are you are you listening to me? Am I doing all right? Am I doing all right? all right? We're gonna start in this pouch now. This is was my fire pouch. Um, let's see what I have in here. I have just a Collings fire disc. I haven't used it yet been in here a while so it's kind of broken up uh, I'm pretty sure it's still useful but there's another way to start fire and then I also have this little cheap thing it has a compass on here but I don't trust this compass at all so this is my match holder it has a whistle too if I need a whistle but these matches are actually really cool I actually show one off here you can buy these at Walmart but they are especially if it's raining these things work like a charm here. I keep the the striker in there as well. This little case has a striker, but it does not work very well. So I'm gonna show these off to you. Demonstrate here. Got my Nalgene here. I'm gonna light, light one of these matches and then I'm gonna pour water on it and then I'm gonna show you how well these matches work. All right, see it's lit. Lights right back up. Oh, let's get some water on there. This thing's out. I'm gonna do that. Still lit. Until the end. So those matches are actually really cool. They're like, I think they're called storm matches or something if you look them up in the store. So there's that. 
I also have more. I have lighters that I carry on me, and so on and so forth. I think I have, here we go, it's just electrical tape. Couldn't find a spot that easily fit in here because everything is overflowing, so I put in there with my fire stuff. I also have several lighters inside my truck and so on and so forth. So we'll zip these pouches up and go on to the main pouch here. Pouch. Start off more medical. I couldn't fit this in the medical pouches, but this is an abdominal trauma wound dressing. So anything to the abs, abdomen, so on and so forth that those really can't help. I have this big dressing that can go over that. You also do on legs. So say if you lose a leg, you can wrap this around the leg and so on and so forth. All right, so I carry a whole bunch of stuff in this pouch. Miscellaneous stuff, a hat. Just in case I need uh, some sun protection. This pouch I have here. This is packed full of mylar blankets and ponchos. You can't have enough of these, especially if you get stranded in a place where it's raining and you don't want to stay in the truck at all times. I have plenty of, and if it's cold and you can't run the truck, run out of gas, or whatever, plenty of mylar blankets and ponchos in there. Moving on, I have this stove which is really cool with fuel and I just set this up make a fire I can either make a fire or use the fuel and I have my canteen I set it on my canteen and I can boil water I think it fills up pretty nice here go on more see more paracord can have enough small hatchet it's like the best but it does its job I need to actually sharpen it some more also carry a, a big axe and a shovel with me on the trails as well I have ammo for my rifle a pair of gloves and this little small pouch carry diapers I also have an infant and a three-year-old so I need to make sure I have diapers on hand I have more that we take with us, but just in case we run out, we have diapers. Now this is something I threw together. I have a tent on the roof of my truck, but also I have a tent that I carry inside, a two-man tent, four-man tent up on the roof. But always plan for the worst. I have a emergency tent, so emergency shelter, just in case we do get away from the truck and I am able to keep this bag, I can throw up a quick shelter for uh, my family of four. And here, this is the first thing that I made when I first started getting into prepping. Not really prepping, but just having a plan. I made this little bag here. I, carry, I have a whole spool of 550 cord in the truck, but I carry 550 in uh, my bag as well. So I have some paracord, a chem light, nice big Gerber knife. So, so this is a chem light. So if some of y'all might not know, but it's a a night stick or what do y'all what do they call it? A glow stick. Crack it open, puts out a good light at night. Another whistle. Have a sewing kit. So I mean, we'll have some clothes on us, but just in case we get rips and tears, or this would work sealing up small wounds. Maybe you could use this. Um, I got fishing line as well, but nice little sewing kit. And I carry a pen and a uh, battery to some of my flashlights that I keep inside of the truck. So here, this is another cool fire starter. So if you don't know, if you want to carry more fire options instead of lighters and uh, flint and like a strike and all that stuff, um, this is a cool thing I recommend. Just a little thing of Vaseline here and a cotton ball. What you do, you just get the Vaseline on your fingers and you rub it in on the outside of the cotton ball. And then you break open the cotton ball a little bit, light it up, and then it acts as a candle and it'll stay lit for two to three minutes. It depends on how much Vaseline you put on there. But it practically makes it a uh, a candle. Here, this is just a waterproof bag that I could use really for anything I keep in there. Huh? What is it on? Give me a 
see what I'm working with? Alright, so here also have water. So there is 4.2 fluid ounces in each little bag. In each one of these waterproof bags here, there is four of these. So about 16 fluid ounces or so in each little pack. I carry three packs. Now this is my emergency water supply. I'm not going to tap into this water supply at all unless we run out of water. Like I said, we carry about 10 gallons on the truck. And then we also have water bottles and stuff in the ice chest and so on and so forth. But this is the emergency water supply. Like I've been telling you, plan for longer than you expect to be out there. And then also, food. So this is our emergency food supply. I don't plan on eating this for fun because it's probably not that good. But we carry a lot of food on us. I have MREs as well packed inside the truck. But these are 2400 calorie food ration bars. They probably taste disgusting. I haven't tried them out. They have a five year shelf life, so they'll probably sit in here. And we probably will never eat them, and then I'll probably throw them away and buy a new set. But I have like four of these. Plenty of calories. This one feels like it's kind of breaking apart. But there we go. I have four people in my family, so we split these four ways. We have 2,400 calories that last us forever how long. I mean, it's going to be hard to make my kids eat this, but they're going to have to. So I'll also carry a roll of duct tape. We all know duct tape is very useful. A thing of baby wipes. Keep it sanitary, just like I have diapers. I need a baby wipe to go along. This is from the uh, military that I got. It's called a VS-17 panel. It's practically a signal panel. So I could untie this and throw up on top of the truck in case we're stranded and we don't want to leave the truck or we want to signal people. It's very bright and I can just signal, do it, in, you know, signal. This is a, spare round for my pistol that I don't have anymore. Open this. I have a beanie. Of course, you never know when it's going to be cold. So you carry extra cold gear. A little sniper veil as we call them. Then I carry batteries. You never know how much how good, much you use batteries until you're shredding and then your batteries run out. So I make sure they don't have to I carry a few things of AA and a thing of AAA, and they're all they're lithium. In here, we have more glow sticks. Plenty of glow sticks to last us at night. And then we got it right here. We have an extra pair of eye protection. I missed something up there. Also have another flashlight. Takes um let's see, double A's if I remember correctly. And then it has white, blue, IR, which I'm not gonna use, and then red. And then you can also double tap it. And it strobes. And you hold it and it brightens up. Nice handy flashlight to have. But other than that. That is my bug out bag, or my get home bag is what I like to call it. Yeah, I was gonna take it on God damn it, I gotta pack all this shit. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm about to turn the camera around. Oh, fuck yeah, it worked. Keep that fucking tripod. I have another one. Oh, you do? Yeah. Do I have a phone mount? No. Oh, damn. I was like, you said. Oh, she used it for Here. the camera. Here. Ryan, can you go do this? Tell me if I'm in the picture. Am I in the picture? Yeah, but it's really dark. Hold on. I'm trying to get the brightness. Now you gotta pack yeah. it all back. Yeah, no. Should I do my truck right now or wait till it's outfitted? Wait. Huh? Wait. Wait for what? Wait for it to be outfitted. Well, I was going to show my emergency supplies that I keep inside the truck. Um, well, this is just a bug out bag. I'll wait till it's done. They good? Yeah. Alright, guys. So, that was my bug out bag uh, and my quick response bag. If you have any questions, obviously ask. Um, I'm not some big survivalist. I know the basic, basic stuff. But you got to start somewhere. And I'm confident that if me and my... Uh, my big family gets stranded out in the wilderness on our trips that I could 
we could be self-sufficient for at least two weeks. So if you have any questions or you want to figure out where you should start from, just let me know. And uh, I'll obviously keep you uh, informed. There's going to be more videos in the future of me showing the outfit of my truck once it's ready to go. I'll show you every single thing we take when we go on our long trips. And uh, that's basically it. Thank you for watching.